Hi there, and welcome to PowerShell Core Recipes. My name's Josh King, and I'll be your guide through this course. Now, this isn't going to be your standard training course, where you may only hear one voice for the next couple of hours. Instead, Nick Rimmer and Scott Hurst, and we've worked together to bring this course to you. So the four of us are contributors on TechSnips, an IT career development platform, where you can either watch short how-to videos or record and share your own videos to help build a collective pool of knowledge. Over on TechSnips, we're a community of like-minded geeks, and you can find us at techsnips.io. But enough about us. Let's have a look at what we're actually going to cover through this course. So you'll learn how to lever where you can either watch short to automate those mundane tasks that you're probably spending far too long completing using graphical interfaces. We'll cover plenty of common scenarios, and each video aims to help you with a specific task. You're going to see plenty of real-world solutions to real-world problems. Since PowerShell Core can be used on all major operating systems, we'll start Section 1 by learning how to install it. We'll first run through installing PowerShell Core on Linux and showing the differences between package managers and a couple of different distributions. And then we'll walk you through the installation process and how you can run it side by side with Windows PowerShell on Windows. Then, since practically everything's stored online these days, in Section 2, we'll look at harvesting information from the web. We'll start off with some basic scraping of web pages, and then we'll go on to actually passing HTML into usable objects, and then we'll cover REST APIs and how PowerShell Core really excels at consuming these. In Section 3, we'll look at managing common infrastructure services, such as DNS and DHCP, and we'll show you how it's just as easy to do this with PowerShell Core as it is in Windows PowerShell. Then in Section 4, we'll spread out onto our local network and start managing remote systems. Now, if you're familiar with Windows PowerShell, you're probably already familiar with WinRM as a method for connecting to remote Windows machines, but we'll show you how you can use SSH as a backend for these connections to manage both Windows and Linux remote endpoints. In Section 5, we'll start working with files. We'll show you how to read and manipulate text files, how to transfer files, and how to navigate the file systems on both Windows and Linux. In Section 6, we'll look at tackling the Windows registry using PowerShell Core, and we'll make sure that you're ready to go to safely manage this important configuration repository for Windows. Then finally, in Section 7, we'll look at customizing PowerShell Core to suit your needs. We'll show you how to customize your prompt so that it shows you exactly the information that you need at a given time, how to manage your path variable, and finally, how to configure your profile so that your customizations are loaded every time you start up PowerShell Core. So in order to fully follow along with this course, you'll need at least three virtual machines or physical systems. One being a Windows 10 client, the next being a Windows server machine, either 2016 or 2019 will get the job done, and you'll also need a Linux machine, with the distribution being up to you. As some of the topics will be reaching out onto the internet, you will need an internet connection, and you'll also need some sort of connectivity between your machines, so that you can look at remoting between them. This could be as simple as a single network that all four machines are living on. So enough with the introductions, let's get started. 